What is going on guys? Welcome to your 16th chemistry tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be talking to you guys about nuclear chemistry. Sounds pretty cool when you say it like that, eh? So anyways, most of the time in chemical reactions what you have is a bunch of elements and they're going to either gain or lose electrons. Now this happens because electrons are really fast and they move around a lot and electrons are really unpredictable. In your nucleus where all your protons and neutrons are they pretty much are stable. They don't they pretty much are just chilling in the nucleus, minding their own business, not bothering anyone else. It's a lot more stable than those crazy electrons. However, sometimes in rare cases, the nucleus does indeed change. And when it does, we have something called nuclear chemistry. Pretty awesome, huh? So anyways, in nuclear reactions, you start out with something called reactants. That's your starting point. It can either be one element or a combination of elements and then some sort of nuclear reaction takes place and you end up with products. So just remember that that isn't only my own terminology that's the technical terminology that you have so if you're taking a chemistry test or anything like that remember you start out with the reactants and you end up with products. And this arrow right here, it actually has a name too, it's called the reaction arrow. It just symbolizes some sort of nuclear reaction that takes place. So you're saying, okay, this uh, equation is pretty useless. When the heck would I ever need this? Well, you actually use this equation a lot whenever you're figuring out which kinds of cool products that an element can make or a combination of elements and this is called balancing nuclear reactions so there are two rules that you need to keep in mind before you start balancing nuclear reactions first the sum of the atomic numbers I'll just write a numbers needs to equal the sum of the atomic numbers on the left and right hand side and also the sum of the mass numbers needs to equal the sum of the oops, accidentally don't mind that, we'll just pretend that never happened. The mass numbers on the right hand side. So we're saying, all right, I need to see an example here. Well, lucky for you, I'm about to do one. So say you have an element like uranium, which is 238-92 uranium. And then some sort of nuclear reaction takes place and you end up with 234-90 thorium and some other element. Well what you want to do is you want to find out what this other element is. So what you need to do is say okay 238 minus 234 is 4 and 92 minus 90 let me make my 4 a little better and 92 minus 90 is 2. So for 2 we know that any element with two protons is called helium. So in the case of 238-92 uranium it can break apart into 234-90 thorium and 4-2 helium, which means, again, the mass number is, excuse me, the mass number is 4, which means protons plus neutrons, and 2 is the atomic number, which means the number of protons. So let me go ahead and show you guys one more example. Say you have two heliums, 4-2 helium, and you combine it with another 4-2, I don't know why, just put it over like a like what's it called uh, numerator and denominator but I did it anyways so say you have 4,2 helium and 4,2 helium and you combine them and you get 2,1 hydrogen and something else you want to find out what that other element is so what you need to do is you need to add up 4 and 4 which is 8 and you subtract 2 so you get 6 and you add up 2 and 2 which is 4 and you subtract 1 which is 3 so 6 3 any element with 3 protons in the nucleus is lithium so the missing element is 6 3 lithium pretty cool huh and I uh, guess another fun fact is whenever you convert one element to another it's called transmutation converting helium 
into hydrogen and lithium is called transmutation. Just a fun factoid. But anyways, that's the basics of nuclear chemistry and also balancing nuclear reactions. But we aren't done yet. We got a whole nother slew of crap to talk about concerning nuclear chemistry. So that's what you guys have to look forward to in the next tutorials. But for now, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.